Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Blue Cloud Aquaculture Monitor Demonstrator webinar. We are very happy that we have a big audience together with us today. I'm Francesca Spagnoli, and I'm the Blue Cloud Coordinator. And I would like to just shortly introduce my colleagues that will be the speakers of this uh, interesting webinar today. We have Anton Allenbrook from uh, FAO, Cécile Nice and G um, Gilbert Modir from IFREMER, and Jeremy Ogo from CLS. They will run us through these relevant uh, topics and then we will have also a space for questions and answers. So feel free to add your questions in the space here on Zoom and we will, take, uh, we will try to take as much as possible your questions. Thanks a lot. And now I leave the floor for Cecile that will introduce Blue Cloud projects. Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, so I'm Cecile. I'm uh, coordinating with Gilbert Walk Package 3 uh, of, of Blue Cloud. Uh, so I'm going to speak about the vision. Next slide, please. So Blue Cloud is a thematic cloud of uh, EOS. So EOS is the European Open Science Cloud, aiming to, and Blue Cloud is aiming to become the reference for the Blue community in terms of data, analytical tools and computing resources, and also uh, helping along to shape the future landscapes in terms of marine research and, uh, and blue economy. Uh, and the missions of uh, Blue Cloud, next slide, yes. Uh, so uh, Blue Cloud uh, aims to uh, pilot cyber platform, uh, bringing together and providing access to multidisciplinary data in terms of uh, observations, models, and so on. Uh, analytical tools and services, and computing and storage facilities. Uh, it will also aim to support research uh, in order to under understand uh, and manage the, as the various aspects of the ocean sustainability. Uh, we have five uh, demonstrators uh, that are relevant for marine societal challenges. And also, uh, Blue Clouds uh, is working to uh, build a community-oriented roadmap uh, for the expansion and sustainability of uh, the Blue Cloud infrastructure and services. We're working with uh, various uh, infrastructures uh, all over uh, Europe. As I told you, we have uh, five uh, demonstrators, so uh, with four different, we're going to say, uh, environment or more uh, biodiversity oriented, that is demonstrator one and two. Uh, from, so demonstrator one is about zoo and phytoplankton EOV products. It's uh, leaded by Vlis. Then uh, the second demonstrator is plankton genomics, leaded by um, UMBLC. And the third uh, demonstrator is more about uh, the environment, uh, marine environmental ind indicators, lead led by CMCC. Then we have the two final ones, fisheries and aquaculture, led by FAO. And uh, this, um, this webinar is about the fifth uh, demonstrator, so the aquaculture monitor uh, demonstrator. And this uh, dem demonstrator is managed by FAO and uh, CLS. Its ambition is to deliver, uh, a uh, to deliver a tool to produce national aquaculture overviews, to help uh, uh, the countries to monitor its aquaculture sectors uh, in an interoperable uh, way. Uh, it will, for this, expand on the already existing uh, aquaculture ag atlas production systems, so apps, and will provide robust and replicable environment. So now I will leave the floor to Anton Ellenbrook of FAO, who is going to explain more about this, uh, this demonstrator. Okay, next slide, uh, please. So good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. I don't know exactly where you are. Um, so I'm going to explain in a 10 minutes, probably I'm going to steal a bit of time from CLS, but uh, I try to be, be short, how FAO thinks this infrastructure provided by the European uh, Commission through Horizon 2020 is a good platform, not only for us, but also for you to develop your 
um, integrated information product. So Blue Cloud is not about only supporting FVO. We will try to use it, but we really see this opportunity more as a way to develop tools that are useful for communities across the planet and not specifically for ourselves. Um, you see that there already is a Blue Cloud platform and what we are doing in the Blue Cloud project is to try to uh, bring experiences that we have uh, developed in the past to a more integrated platform so that it is easier to use, it's more standard driven, it is more replicable. So we will see an increase in data quality if people start adopting these types of platforms. And that is for FAO the main reason to be in this collaboration to make sure that people have access to better data, have access to more standardized products and can produce more standardized output. So it's easier for us to develop an understanding of where aquaculture and fisheries are going on this planet. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is, uh, again, we want to develop this inner data infrastructure. So tools that we already have to bring these as autonomous distri distributed, but also open components into a much bigger infrastructure than what people are using now. Next slide, please. And then in that infrastructure, you will find loads of flexible integration tools. So this infrastructure for us is really a Swiss army knife for nerds. And uh, there's so much to find there for people that are into development, but we will skip that in this uh, short presentation, but there is a lot of standards uh, and protocols supported in this infrastructure that help you to build really robust and interoperable tools. Next slide, please. So the demonstrator objectives, so they are not FEO objectives, these are really blue cloud objectives, but we try to align them with uh, what we want to do, and that is to strengthen methodologies, methodologies and tools in support of aquaculture atlases. So what is an aquaculture atlas for us? It is a global community that we can develop together to comprehensive overviews of aquaculture features. And in this case, the features are aquaculture floating cages in a region to help them improve their status toward achieving SEGs 2, that is food security, and SEG 14, that is life below water. So the methodology that we see here in Blue Cloud Developing is a co-creation of a community. So it's not only one a group of people that develop something uh, very quickly and uh, have an analysis done. But no, we really try to see this as a community, which means that there's many stakeholders, as many uh, parallel processes. It is really segmented in uh, data preparation, data analysis, and data dissemination. So how does this community then work? It's in a few steps. So first you delineate your area of interest. You talk to the people that provide you the satellite images. You talk to the aquaculture people, where are really your active areas? And then after you've delineated your area, you try to detect cages and that is already something achieved. CLS will show you later how that works. And then we try to infer from the satellite images what the activity state of a cage is. Is it resting or if it is a stocked one? Or, and then we try to define what the seasons are. And then from those, a combination of those, we then try to describe what is going on in cage clusters. So cage cluster uh, information usually comes from national um, authorities, so we will have names of farms, we have cage types, we know the species, which together makes with the satellite remote sensing information gives us a rich source to put into an atlas and in that atlas uh, we can then estimate statistics based on the combination of remote sensing and national registers and that is the type of information we would like to uh, disseminate, so it's more the statistics than individual cage information. And then the tool that we use is then the virtual lab uh, that becomes an aquaculture atlas, which starts from a tool that we already developed in the previous program in uh, under H2020, the AAPS. And then will be developed into an integrated demonstrator. So integrated means we can also access data from other uh, demonstrators. So we want to use this atlas also as an opportunity to see how we can share information on essential ocean variables, maybe on um, on uh, algae events or deoxygenation events and also maybe some bathymetry information. And all that information comes from the same blue cloud infrastructure but from other demonstrators. Integration is the key there. Next slide please. So the first step as I said the area delineation. So for who is this uh, tool then uh, meant? So 
what are the when is it does it make sense to ask for a um, a use of this tool so you need a large number of gauges so you see in the in, uh, in the example below that we did over malta where we managed to detect i think a great total of three areas where there was some aquaculture and i don't think that is it is uh, useful to work it um, um, if there are only a one or two or five gauges it is uh, it works it works on smaller numbers, but it, uh, we want to make a statistical analysis, which means we will not have a very reliable information, but we want to have the grand total, which means in, if you have a small number of gauges, you will have false positives or false negatives, and that will have an impact on the outcome of your statistics. And then you need to have a monitoring need. So maybe you already know exactly what's going on in your gauges. And maybe you do not need um, a, a new overview with a new tool that only confound your existing statistical reporting. So we, you really need to balance between the need of an aquaculture monitor and other types of information that you need to integrate. In our case, um, we are not focusing on individual cages, but we want to observe a trend in large samples. So we cannot and do not want to track individual cages. It also has uh, some privacy issues there, but we really want to work on statistics over a large number of cages and over larger time series. We want to compare one year to another year so really try to think about this as a statistical tool and that not as a individual cage analytical tool. Next slide, please. So if we have our area defined and we have our, our case defined, um, how do we go about detecting of the floating cages? So we have done this over a test area in Greece where the technology was developed and we have a hit score of more than 80% of the gauges that were found and then the 20% we analyzed it and that was because gauges were closed after we took the satellite image so we used maybe a satellite image that was too old or we used a satellite image that was too new where the gauge was not already installed. So you always have uh, with satellite images if they are not real, real time or near time things change on the ground and you always have to take care that when you make an analysis that what you actually your data represent then we are now developing a, over a south atlantic in over chile we are trying to integrate a new technology to analyze the activity in cages and that is the ongoing activity of sea that will be presented later next slide please so once we have detected our cages then we uh, we have that technology we prepared with uh, CLS and now we are working towards the integration in a, a bigger infrastructure. So that step means a lot of collaboration within the blue cloud. So we work with uh, Yves Premier and the other technology providers to bring all this uh, um, technology into a cloud environment, which means that we try to work through OGC standard data accesses to get into the EO data domain and also to get into the environmental monitoring data. And that is a two-way process. So we are not only trying to um, bring data that of our analysis to the other partners, but we also try to bring in data from C data and email net chemistry and physical data into this atlas. It will be a next year activity, but it's on the agenda. And that is the more like the overall layer, but then we have also domain specific development. So how, how do we make this use case uh, stronger? It is by relying on standardized data processes where we want to bring the satellite's whole workflow of CLS for the data analysis into the blue cloud. We want to apply uh, our generic workflows just to inform you that R is a technology we use widely to, after CLS has done the analysis, to bring that analysis into the blue cloud infrastructure. We apply a lot of uh, R code. And then we want to consolidate the data visualization and analysis tools in a strong infrastructure. So we have the analysis. We have the shape files that come out of this, and then we rely on a data viewer that is development uh, together with another demonstrator, the fisheries atlas. We want to have a shared layer of data analytics. That is uh, a entire work package for in Blue Cloud that helps us to, with the anal analytics of the geospatial data. And then we have some data enrichment where we involve the EO and environmental monitoring data from the other demonstrators. Next slide, please. So a comprehensive view, but actually what comes out of all that technology. So in the same step, we have uh, the previous slide. This I discussed a bit how we make this analysis. And here, 
what then comes out of this analysis, and it is a description of gauge cluster features. Oh, sorry. As you see in the image, we have a detected a gauge cluster, and now we can also edit. Uh, it is a shape file, so on that shape file, we then have a feature editor, and for that also we again use ISO and OGC standards to uh, open the layer and uh, start editing the features. You see that we have this little pop-up window which means that we also have a way to basically add and uh, edit information that were provided through other sources. So we, you may have started with a CSV file, we separated that to something that is in our uh, geo network and then we map it to the individual cages or cage clusters. Um, we have here a, a viewer, so this is the OpenVR viewer. Again, a good example of uh, how an EU infrastructure helps us to um, collaborate. So this is a viewer that is not only used for this specific aquaculture tool, but it's also used in many other contexts. The result is then an inventory, inventory of cage clusters, uh, where we can have a, also now a inventory of case occupancy. So do how many empty cages do we see over season? Maybe when the, we can um, infer when harvesting was taking place, etc. And that output goes then into what we call the atlas. And that is the next slide the last step. How do we then disseminate this atlas? Again, we rely on the same infrastructure. So you see that from start to finish, all the information is managed in the same infrastructure, which means we don't have to step out or step in or start up a new um, infrastructure and bring data from one place to the other. It's all done through the same EU provided uh, infrastructure. And for the dissemination, we have then a several options. So you can go and log in and to your VRE and open the OpenVR viewer and you can visualize your data. But the data are also available through GeoServer and GeoNetworks so that other demonstrators can use them too. And we also have a idea to build custom report storylines next year so that you can, over an area of interest that you defined in the first step, you say, so this is my area of interest that we can grab this information from the GeoServer and GeoNetwork, have the analysis done not only online in a visual way, but also to have them in a reported format. And that would be basically the last slide. Next slide, please. So now, um, so we have this comprehensive environment and now I think Jeremy uh, can take the place of Emmerich, who was not available today, and he can explain a bit about the tools and the activities to develop these tools will be and have been in the Blue Cloud. Hi everyone, uh, so I'm Jeremy, I worked with uh, Emmerich uh, on the technical part of the, uh, of the farm detection and so uh, next slide please. So I'm going to try to explain how uh, the algorithm works and uh, uh, how we interact with the Blue Cloud platform. Uh, in terms of uh, data, input data and output data. So uh, as Anton said, uh, what we want to do is to first uh, detect the location of the farms using high scale, uh, low resolution satellite images. And uh, then after we have uh, the location, we can download uh, high resolution images uh, around the desired farms to uh, look at them a bit more closely and uh, identify uh, some characteristics like the number of cages or is there any activity going on or uh, these type of questions. So for the first point, uh, so we first start with the cage location detection. So we, uh, the input is a region of interest and the date uh, and we get from this uh, some uh, satellite images. So Sentinel-1 and 2 uh, satellite images and these are uh, this type of data that we're using to uh, locate uh, the cages and uh, then we the output of this part is uh, the, the location of the farms in uh, in the shape file that we're gonna send to uh, the blue cloud platform for visualization and uh, after this so we download the uh, high resolution images uh, which are plan planet data. Uh, so the resolution is about uh, four meter, uh, which is uh, enough to be able to uh, identify the ages of the cages and uh, be able to uh, count uh, how many cages and uh, see the activity. 
So I'm gonna explain a bit more uh, in depth uh, what are the different steps to get uh, to those results and uh, illustrates a bit uh, the first results we got. So next slide, please. So for the first part, uh, we're going to focus just on the, uh, the cage location detection. So what you can see on the left is a, a Sentinel-2 image over Chile. Uh, so, and, uh, so you can see it's a really high-scale image. And really the, the goal is to detect uh, where are the cages and uh, be able to count them. So what the first step is uh, to first uh, look for an image without uh, many clouds, which is, can be quite uh, difficult sometimes. Uh, so uh, th this step is first is, is done manually right now, but we're hoping that uh, we can integrate uh, this operation uh, in uh, the Blue Cloud platform. So the first step is we download the Sentinel-2 image. Then once we have it, we download uh, Sentinel-1 images, which are radar-based uh, image. And uh, we download a time series. So maybe uh, a few images uh, within a month around this date. And we're going to use this time series to perform uh, statistics to be able to uh, first uh, uh, segment the image to uh, detect uh, where is the water and where there is no water. And then we perform statistics to try to uh, remove some false positives and uh, like, for example, some islands uh, and uh, to be able to isolate just the, the farms, which are uh, our point of interest. So basically the image on the right is uh, an illustration of the results we, we get. Uh, so you can see the, the yellow dots are uh, the, the position of the farms that we detected. And uh, you, can, you can see uh, the image at the bottom, which is a zoom on the image. And uh, so basically uh, what we get with this algorithm right now is a performance over 70% uh, of uh, correctly detected farms, which is uh, right now uh, enough to uh, perform statistics and just get a trend of uh, uh, the activity going on uh, in, the, in the region of interest. And then, next slide, please. Once we have the, as you can see on the left, once we have the, the position of the farms, we can, uh, as I said, uh, focus more deeply uh, on the, the area around those farms and uh, download the high resolution image, so a planet image, uh, to, uh, to uh, try to identify uh, how many cages uh, there are and see if we can uh, uh, spot any activity. So uh, what you can see here is uh, the input uh, is a high resolution image and uh, the output of the algorithm is uh, on the right. It's uh, basically the characteristics of the farms. So uh, you can see that uh, we are able through some image processing algorithm to uh, count the number of cages uh, and also uh, detect the edges of the cages to, uh, in order to uh, visualize better uh, what's going on. Um, so the output here is gonna be a, a shape file that we send on the Blue Cloud platform. Uh, in, in terms to, in order to get some uh, good visualization. But uh, a point here which is uh, uh, important is we're still working on it uh, because uh, the, the first version we had of this algorithm was working on very high uh, resolution images. And uh, here we are using planet images which are uh, a bit which have a resolution a bit lower. So we're trying to adapt the algorithm to uh, make it work on planet images as well. Uh, so this is uh, what you can see here on the screen is an example uh, of the results using the planet images. So it's, it's working and uh, we were still, uh, uh, we're still trying to uh, work on it to make it uh, even more accurate. And uh, yeah, so as I said, the, the output is just gonna be the characteristics of the farms uh, as uh, Anton said, 
uh, but we're still uh, having uh, we're still working on the activity detection part uh, because we are sometimes not always able to detect if there is any uh, net in the cages or uh, sometimes we're just able to to detect the edges but not really what's going on inside so we're still working on this part uh, and uh, yeah so we'll we we don't have anything to show right now on this yeah, next slide, please. So that was it for the, the aquaculture uh, monitoring part. So now I give the floor to uh, Gilbert of IFREMER for the integration uh, using the Blue Cloud data access. So thank you, Jeremy. And um, I will give you some details about the technical part of uh, the implementation of uh, the VRE. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I will not enter very deep in details uh, on the technical part because there will certainly be a, a webinar on that subject next year. But uh, just uh, give you some uh, overview of uh, why, what, and why uh, uh, we are using uh, virtual uh, research environment concepts. In fact, the Blue Cloud um, relies on the concept of virtual research environment, VRE, as uh, uh, mentioned by Cecile, Jeremy, and uh, Anton. And that uh, is uh, the main reason for that is to help researchers to collaborate by providing and harmonize access to various data sets, data sources, and uh, uh, especially uh, in a context of multidisciplinary uh, data sets and, uh, and that's uh, a key point. And um, also to, to provide in the same environment discipline specific tools such as data analysis, data visualization uh, and so on. And also uh, for that uh, to, to provide a, ro a robust and uh, user-friendly environment uh, for, for the application and for accessing uh, data and discovering uh, the various data sets that are um, provided by, by the use case in, in the context of Blue Cloud. Uh, in the Blue Cloud, uh, the implementation of the VREs is, uh, relies on the T4 science uh, systems and uh, environment. Uh, this uh, system has been developed uh, over years by, by CNR and in application to, to the open uh, science paradigm. That means that uh, it's uh, really uh, open to, to users from, from the scientific part, but also for decision making and other, other kind of uh, users. Uh, and, uh, that's really the objective of the Blue Cloud to, to make as open uh, both data sets and applications to, to process and to visualize and to, uh, to, to um, let's say, um, uh, make a, a more advanced uh, usage of, uh, of, of data, provided data. And for, for that objective, D4 Science allow data hosting and curations and especially uh, with uh, accurate uh, metadata uh, against uh, the data sets uh, to allow users to discover them and also data analytics and visualization tools especially for geospatial data in our case today and also uh, software dynamic deployment that is mostly for, for the developer part of uh, the usage of the VREs, but uh, obviously it benefits also to, to, to users to have the most uh, and to have access to, to the most recent of, uh, version of, of the software. And uh, obviously we need for that uh, to control resources that are used uh, for accessing data and also to, to run software and to process data. So an accounting and sharing control is also provided by, by D4 Science. 
Uh, next slide, please. The main feature, I will not enter in details, but the main feature um, provided by, by D4 Science are relies um, mostly on a metadata catalog that publish uh, uh, metadata uh, in order to discover data, services, and related information about uh, the objects which are included in the VRE. Um, and uh, that allows the users to retrieve data from the different data sources and also uh, all available services which are made uh, available by, by application developers. And the metadata catalog is, uh, let's say, the, uh, the main component to, of the uh, D4 Science uh, theory. Obviously, for data processing, users must have uh, access to workspace in order to uh, for, for storing their uh, local uh, data and uh, intermediate data, and also to browse, to upload, and to download the, their own files and, and folders. Um, another um, feature provided by D4 Science is named Data Miner. And this data miner uh, is a data processing platform, in fact, which uh, online interfaces uh, harmonize for, for, for users and for all applications provided by, by the D4 Science in, within the D4 Science uh, uh, system, and um, uh, which allows also a dynamic integration of new algorithms, new methods, new application to be uh, made available to, to users. And that's the second main part of, uh, of the data, uh, of the D4 science system. And the third uh, main part or component of the D4 science system is a spatial data infrastructure, as uh, you have seen before, uh, in order to allow data, spatial data storage and also publishing spatial data discovery and access, and also all OGC compliance services, that means WFS, WMS, in order to, to for, for example, to access data uh, uh, using this uh, um, um, protocol, uh, standardized protocols, or to, to visualize uh, data on maps, uh, on web maps, in fact, from different data sources uh, and from different data products that are processed using uh, uh, application made available in D4 Science and in the VREs. And as a consequence, we need for that uh, an integrated user uh, authentication and authorization framework, which is uh, which relies on several authentication systems, both uh, social networks or, uh, uh, um, for example, uh, Géant uh, authentication uh, schema or, or things like that. So you can use your own, uh, users can use uh, your own uh, login and password uh, for, for that, especially the, the login and password you make use uh, in general, in your organization, if you uh, are part of an organization, a research organization, for example, or, or um, a part of a university or education organization. And also to provide and to boost uh, uh, contents that has been made available uh, in the VREs and uh, also uh, to boost. Uh, uh, the usage or your application, there are direct links to social networks that help to, to publish the results and to publish also the, the new versions that are, are made available of uh, all the components that, made, that are available in the VRE. So next slide, please. From the user point of view, their D4 Science provide a guided user interface that is the usage of the various applications that are made available. And 
both for access to, to the data space and also to execute an experiment using uh, several applications uh, in a pipeline, uh, for example, or, or things like that. Next slide, please. Just an overview uh, on how the D4 Science system is implemented. As said before, it's, uh, this system relies on uh, some uh, uh, common components that are the catalogs, uh, the geospatial data services, and the e-infrastructure resources on the left of this uh, picture. And on the right, uh, this system um, uh, make, um, easy, uh, make easier to, to access uh, computing resources, both from uh, applications that are developed in various languages, uh, programming languages like Air, Python, uh, Java, and so on. And, uh, uh, when a user submit a query to, to launch an application and to run an application, this query is uh, processed by, by a main uh, component, a main data miner component. And then the process could be uh, uh, located in another, uh, on another server, on another machine, using the WPS, uh, Web Processing Service, in order to, to launch uh, the, the process on another uh, computing uh, facility. In fact. And that's the main principle of, uh, of, uh, of the D4 science um, uh, system. Next slide, please. Um, yes, uh, I will let uh, now the floor to Anton for the conclusion and uh, uh, with uh, final slides and please Anton, thanks for Can I have the next slide then? Thanks uh, Gilbert. Uh, so maybe a, a quick discussion. Uh, if there are any questions, so please use the QA. And Maybe if I quickly summarize, so why would, there are some questions in the chat that I will maybe come back to later. But just to give us a summary, so why do we think is um, Blue Cloud a good platform for an atlas with including monitoring services? So not only a static atlas, but also an atlas that evolves over a, a season. So we have this interoperability with the EOS uh, service catalog. We can offer a global coverage, uh, but that will be dependent on where the research questions come from. So we are still developing the technology. We have our own research questions, but research questions that would come from the field would have to be assessed. And the uh, research questions that we typically cover have to do with uh, what is the uh, production capacity of my country or my area of interest compared to the years before. So FAO uh, does not collect very detailed in-country statistics on aquaculture, but a lot of countries do it themselves. So this tool would be for a country monitoring organization that wants to have an estimate of the production trends in aquaculture in their country. Before they report their statistics to FAO, this would be a tool for them to validate if the, what they have collected in the field through other means uh, compares to what we see in the satellite analysis. So we can do this in theory on any location on the planet if there are not too many clouds, which is a practical problem in Northern Norway and Southern Chile where we are testing the approach. And it is also cost effective because we try to use satellite images that come from uh, the Sentinel missions and we try to have in FAO we have an MOU uh, with planet and to um, for our cases that we are interested in we have this uh, free images it is for if you want to apply this to your own country and you want to go into this detailed level so we have the detection level which should basically result based on free images and this technology we can uh, then discuss how much it would be for us to set up an environment for you, but it is not for me to decide. You would have to discuss that with Blue Cloud Management. 
and then we can help you to estimate, um, uh, for instance, uh, the occupancy of cages. So we have some uh, issues there with, we do not have super high resolution for a few reasons. We want uh, to offer a statistical tool, not a individual cage tracking tool. Um, because we think we uh, enter then in some privacy concerns and we enter into national uh, legal concerns and we by using lower resolution imagery we think we can uh, give you the statistics without infringing on what we believe might be sensitive issues for people if a country says it's not a problem for us they can ask for a uh, specific dedicated uh, tool and they can ask then also to or a commercial offer to have higher resolution images. But again, we are in a blue cloud project. We do not want to have too high resolution data in, managed in this project just because we want to stay out of um, privacy and, and confidentiality issues. But in theory, the tool could be using higher resolution images if you pay for them and if you have them secured in your own uh, virtual research environment. And then how can we estimate cage activity? Uh, that is a good question because that is exactly what the research is about. So again, we need a large number of cages and then we can compare average values by year. So we do not know for an individual cage if it was active or not, if it was moved, if it, uh, but we have this larger sample and from that larger sample, we hope to be able to detect a signal. And for that we use uh, VHR images, but we, really need to have a, a larger sample. And we are employing, there was a question on AI. Yes, we try to do this with uh, machine learning and some uh, artificial intelligence to see if we can detect a signal from a, a trend in a weak signal. More questions in the q Thanks a lot, Anton. Yeah. We have quite a lot of questions actually, which is always good. Um, so perhaps we can start with some of those. I see that there are already two answers in the chat and let's try to answer the other online. And um, one question is, uh, one interesting question is, um, what are the typical research questions from the research community that would use this tool? Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I can, for, yes, I for think. I think it's more uh, end user oriented, so community. And I think I already answered it. So the tool is what we develop in Blue Cloud is a, like a sort of a template tool. And then if you meet the, the criteria, to, if you want to say, I want to adopt this tool for my research questions here are usually, what are the trends in aquaculture production in my country? So it means you already have a, an interest in a country, you are already uh, owner of data on aquaculture in your country. So you can be a ministry or you can be a research organization in a country or a province of your country. And you want to uh, have a seasonal update of the where the cages are. And if you want to go for this, this next level, so the monitoring level, you might want to be able to pay for some additional imagery. And you can then also observe a trend in cage occupancy and when they were harvested and not because, but then it depends on the frequency of the images you can buy. So the research questions are understanding your local food system. So what is the contribution of cage-based aquaculture to your local food systems if you have the marketing information where the products go to. You can also say I have an idea that my cages contribute a lot to eutrophication in my coastal areas. So, and then just by having the number of cages and the uh, estimated production from those cages, you already know how much uh, feed they were adding to those cages. So you have an estimate of nutrient load coming out of the cages. Uh, you may be interested in how do diseases uh, go through your, um, through your cage system. So if you find in the EOV demonstrator, the ocean currents who have uh, overall wind directions, you know that if a pathogen arrives at a certain location, you know the dispersion patterns of that pathogen. You can already estimate which cages will be at risk of when you have an observation of a pathogen that comes into your area. So there's many research questions where it is essential to know the exact locations and not estimate locations of your farms. 
marine spatial planning, another example where a research question would come from, what is the best location of my cage? So you can only understand the best location of your cages if you've analyzed what you already have in your country and you have, if you understand the impact of those cages. So this then a, would be a real learning tool. So we have all the information from the other demonstrators. We bring, you bring them together, you get an understanding of the dynamics in and around your cages and you're then looking into the future if you want to plan agriculture in a new area or you want to close it somewhere. This would be an, a, a fantastic tool to have all the information in one environment accessible and open for analysis, etc. Great. I can, I can go on there. For <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of, <laughs> of course. Another interesting question is, would it be possible to estimate the actual biomass amount of fish and shrimps being farmed at the cage? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not possible. No, sim, sim, no, yeah, no, if you, okay. So if you only see this from the surface and you do not know if your cage is uh, 6, 12 or 80 meters deep, of course, you cannot make a, a good estimation. Um, it is all about having the ancillary information and, and an, uh, of a understanding of what is going on in, in your region of interest. So we are in Rome. I have no idea what the situation is in Turkey or in, in Greece in every individual cage. So you really need to have this community of collaboration where you really try to work with people in the field to understand what is the dynamics in an area. So we, we do not develop this as, as our tool, we develop this as a tool where communities can step in and they can ask these questions. And, but the, we really try to bring this data in this, uh, in this EU platform and from there start to help answer these questions about uh, cage productivity and, and overall estimates of impacts of cage agriculture. Okay, and other two questions that I think are, they are a little bit interrelated is, do you monitor water quality parameters in the vicinity of the cages? And is this method working for inland brackish waters where they have plenty of aquaculture farms? I can take this one again. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, ask the others to Gibra. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> there are a lot of for Gibra as well. I think, yes, I think the, the question is basically the same as the previous one. So we, we yeah, built this tool true. not for ourselves, we built this for communities. In a previous project, we worked with uh, aquaculture farms that also brought in uh, measurements from their, their precise locations and we try to help them with development of a more standardized tool. So all the farms, they were measuring the data at different times of the day uh, with different, uh, different depths. And then to make a model that helps you analyzing cage uh, production, if everybody comes with a different way to measure their data. So it really is about trying to help people standardize and harmonize the way they collect the data, the way they analyze the information and the way they uh, present the results. And I think a infrastructure like this really where you can have a people discussing. So we have this opportunity now to do this remote sensing. Can we also try, and try to follow up on it and start uh, harmonizing, standardizing what's happening in the, uh, you cannot say in the field, but in the water. Okay. And we, there are similar projects to this where they work on this standardization harmonization. But they are also a bit fragmented. So it would be good if the, more of those communities would join this, uh, this Blue Cloud Initiative infrastructure and start trying to work with Great, the data lot. miner and other analytical tools, yes. I've seen Shibar has been very smart because already replied to all the questions <laughs> via chat, but there is still one that perhaps uh, you can both take together because it's what's the scale of the demonstrator and what sort of data volume are you dealing with? And I think it's interesting also to not just focus on this specific one and perhaps Gilbert can also explain what's the volume of data in the different demonstrators we have in Blue Cloud mm -hmm. so others can also understand if there's interesting for joining us. Yes, I can answer for in general perspective uh, um, for, for most of the demonstrator. Uh, up to now, the volume of data is quite restricted because uh, we do not, it's really demonstrators and not, uh, we do not want to, to manage a, a very large amount of data because uh, we have not uh, yet the resources to, to do that and the computing resources to do, to do that. But 
uh, we are in discussion with uh, uh, IT uh, infrastructure providers such as uh, Cineca in Italy, uh, such as also the DIAS uh, provided by Emetsat, uh, Mercato Ocean International, and so on. And uh, in order to enlarge uh, our capacity of processing and storage also of, of data. So uh, Blue Cloud is also helping to develop IT infrastructure or to make access to IT infrastructure uh, to be able to manage larger data sets and larger computing uh, require, requests. So uh, maybe Anton could uh, answer for, for aquaculture. Uh, there was also maybe if I can ask a, a quick intervention of uh, Pasquale Pagano. He knows exactly how many data are managed, and yeah, he yeah. can he might also answer a question on the policy, the data policy. So which data are open and which data are uh, accessible by, for instance, companies? So do we publish everything as open data, all our results, or are we more restricted in in access? So, Yes, let's give the floor to Pasquale. If possible. Uh, yes, uh, I hope that you can hear me. Yes, we can. Yeah. In terms of a policy, uh, the access to the data is governed, you know, by the policy uh, established by the virtual research environment. So any virtual research environment that is hosted by Blue Cloud, you know, can define their own policy and can define you know the way the data can be accessed by the people participating to the to the virtual research environment so there is not only just one policy data may be public may be restricted may be open access and this is decided by um, the community in terms of data volume as you should better say you know these are demonstrators uh, however, you know, the first science is a distributed infrastructure that already integrates resources from different providers and is, um, is making an experimentation with the Cineca, the supercomputing center in Italy. But in general, you know, we are talking of uh, uh, terabytes of data, let me say, that can potentially be managed, you know, by, by the infrastructure without any problem. Thanks a lot, Pagan. I think it's, uh, it's really insightful <laughs> and helpful. Let me see if there are any other questions. So one we have already replied. Uh, yeah, very easy. Who can I contact by email for that? Um, we, have just, we are just showing now all our contacts. You can send an email uh, to info, bluecloud.org. Uh, you can contact us also through our website and Twitter and LinkedIn accounts. And then we will um, send you the contact of the person that you, you that is the best one to, to reply to your questions. I don't know to which kind of questions we are referring to, but we will, of course, uh, get back to you as soon as possible and uh, we will uh, refer to, to the best person. Let me see if in the chat we have also other. Yes, there is, there is, uh, There's one more question that I'd like yes, to quickly yes. answer, yes. So uh, for inland brackish uh, waters, where we are also working on a parallel case to this one, where we will have a, a detection of uh, aquaculture ponds uh, that are intermingled with uh, rice paddy fields. And it was already tested in South Sulawesi. And next year we will go back to monitor the or develop maps of aquaculture in brackish water in ponds. Thanks, Anton. No. Thanks a lot. I think it's really useful. Okay, so if there is any other question left, let's see, let's give just a few minutes. Doesn't look so. I really would like to thank all the speakers today for this very insightful uh, discussion and just remind you that we are going to run uh, other relevant um, webinars on the demonstrators that Cecile already mentioned at the beginning of our presentation. So you will find all the information in our website and we really hope the, that you can uh, join us in our future webinars. And the next one will be on the 14th of October 
so please register and uh, we will hope to see you all soon there. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.